All right, how's it going out there, folks? Uh, welcome back here to a Tuesday night, take number two, maybe take number three here. Uh, it is the Earth Master out here, 8.38 p.m. That's California time, May 6, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity shows a little point three across the uh, California region. Uh, earlier today, throughout the day here, we had a little bit of uptick across the San Francisco Bay region with a number of earthquakes. Got about eight earthquakes here on various fault systems. A little increase here after a couple weeks of literally no quakes around the region. So things are starting to uh, kick up a little bit here around the San Francisco region. I still think that we could see some larger earthquake activity here just because of the uh, very quiet conditions out here. And now a bunch of swarming across various fault systems, indicative there of uh, pressure increasing on the uh, uh, into the San Francisco region. Uh, 2.6 outside of Dunnigan, that uh, more than likely associated with the Great Valley Thrust Fault, although the Dunnigan Hills Fault sits a little bit further south. Not a big earthquake, very shallow though. Uh, there is the Great Valley Thrust Fault that sits out here, extends uh, across the west side of the Sacramento Valley. And uh, occasionally get some earthquakes there. Nothing big, a little 2.6. Uh, further up north into Northern California, 2.7 earthquake off the Cascadia, off of the triple, paint, triple point boundary. We do have a number of trimmers out there throughout the day being recorded. 231 epicenters of trimmer, mainly across the southern end down here of the Cascadia subduction zone. That's where it's been uh, somewhat amplified. Uh, resulting in uh, occasional earthquake activity out here as we've seen in the last seven days. number of quakes down here, mainly across the uh, extreme southern area of that subduction zone. Uh, further down south of San Francisco here, still got the Garlock Fault Shear Zone uh, kicking up some activity. Let me double check, make sure everything's recorded in here. It's just been an odd evening. Uh, some movement out there across the Garlock Fault Shear Zone, this area right here. Nothing big. A uh, number of earthquakes throughout the Ridgecrest area as well. Looking at the 2.5 map and above, removes pretty much all the earthquakes out here. So just a number of smaller microquakes in the area of Southern California. Still waiting on uh, some uptick out here, but it's just one of those days, or past few days, I should say, have been relatively calm. Occasional small microquakes, but this is uh, can happen on any given day out here. Up into the Pacific Northwest, looks like uh, one earthquake outside of Mount Rainier, another one over here, a little 2.1 near Nile, I think that's correct. Uh, but aside from that, pretty quiet conditions prevailing through the Pacific Northwest. Small earthquake activity throughout Utah, which is uh, very common there. What do we got down here? One earthquake just kicking up, it looks like, in the last 20 minutes right off the San Andreas Fault. I don't know if I've seen that here, but... It is off of that bend zone where the uh, plate boundary kind of takes a little strain bend. Watch that. Uh, Texas area, <clears throat> Texas area, in Oklahoma, still getting uh, some earthquakes out there. I do want to double check Yellowstone up here real quick. See what we have for the Yellowstone super volcano. See if there's anything major going on. And it looks pretty quiet like it has been. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity, not a whole lot of anything showing up there on the graphs across Yellowstone National Park. Pretty quiet. All right, so there's the uh, oil field earthquake activity, New Madrid Seismic Zone 2.3 from this morning, and uh, a little odd quake out around Richmond, Virginia. Of course, this area, a number of large quakes here historically. The most recent one back in, uh, I think it's 2011, if I remember right, a 5.7. Take a look here at the world view. A number of earthquakes up here in Alaska, quite amplified. Uh, really nothing of any major activity. A number of threes and fours. Looks like the largest is going to be a, well, it's going to be a 4.5 way south here off the Aleutian Trench. But a uh, number of fours out here and also some smaller earthquake activity being reported. Nothing big happening across that area for now. Uh, this earthquake, 4.6 from earlier this evening, starting to get there around that swarming zone that... Uh, kicked off last year and also a little bit this year uh, big time swarming was going on here last year and the Japanese government put out a mega quake warning for the Nankai trough due to the swarming down here across the southern end and also a lot of earthquake activity happening around it obviously uh, leading to 
uh, speculate that this subduction zone uh, is experiencing quite a bit of strain. So we do have that 4.6 here today. A lot of earthquake around it. So watch that uh, Nankai trough here on the southern coast of uh, Japan. Definitely capable of producing some big earthquakes. Fiji. Oh, what do we got? There's some deeper activity. One of the last quakes there. 4.7, 363 miles deep into that subduction zone. New Zealand, pretty quiet. A lot of older activity out here in the Red Rings, but uh, still fairly active uh, across the last 24 hours. Let's see. 5.8 earthquake way out here in the southeastern area uh, near the uh, central east Pacific rise of the uh, Pacific Ocean out there. Things normally uh, amplify further across the Peru Chile Trench here following this type of activity. Let's see if we got anything going on. Really nothing up north. I don't see any uptick yet, but uh, definitely keep an eye on it. Some deeper activity underneath Puerto Rico. Look at that 3.8. Uh, pretty deep one there. That's associated with the uh, Mariotos Trough, I believe. Uh, major subduction zone here that sits at the southern end of Puerto Rico. And uh, the um, uh, Dominican Republic area major subduction zone so it's been quite active out here recently that's a super deep quake and the latest one here a little two-pointer that's uh further east here along that subduction zone I just kind of watch it. it's been pretty active out there recently as well uh, let's see what else we got for the atlantic ocean anything major going on pretty quiet out there across the atlantic for now uh, normal typical activity across the middle east and Mediterranean regions, nothing major going on there for now as far as earthquake activity. Uh, let's go ahead and check out space weather, see if, uh, see if anything's going on here on the sun. Uh, looks like they've added a G1 class storm here, May 9th, UTC time, May 9th, coming up here in a couple nights, a couple days, um, due to a coronal hole. Number 46 here has been facing us for a little while. And uh, it is kind of off of the Earth-Sun direct plane. It, it may shoot to the south of us. I don't know. But either way, it looks like they are issuing a um, maybe a little bit of uptick here in the Aurora department around this time frame. We'll check on that a little bit later as we get closer. But as uh, far as the Auroras go right now, not a whole lot going on. A look at the flare activity or lack thereof. Uh, we're down into the B flare cate category after a little bit of C flare movement here within the last couple of hours, but B 8.2. Goodness. Uh, let's see what we got here for these sunspots. You know, 4079 here has been a massive sunspot uh, that's facing that has been facing the Earth for a number of days. That is continuing to drift further across the western quadrant of the sun, western area of the sun that will be out of sight, out of mind here in a number of days. I still don't see any um, growth growth within this sunspot area. So probably not going to do anything as far as any stronger flares go. Uh, maybe this area back here. A little bit of complexity, a little popcorn colors there very close to each other, indicating that magnetic uh, structure within that sunspot. So we'll watch that one maybe up here as well, but I, I really don't see anything of any noteworthy sunspots right now these guys bumped up the uh, flare threat a little bit to about 45 percent chance for an m flare five percent for x flare and uh, we'll just kind of watch them see what happens here but i'm not really expecting much right now uh maybe a prominence eruption here looks like maybe some uh, super huge arc here of plasma those have a tendency to blast off the sun and uh, it's getting almost into the Earth-directed view there, so we'll see what happens with that. Watch that here in the coming days. Quite visible here, and another one down here. Uh, Storm Prediction Center, far as storm reports go today. Let's take a look and see what these guys are reporting for uh, the severe weather. A little slow there for some oddball reason. I don't think it's me. We're doing good. So, I don't know what's going what is going on with this internet? Maybe it's just this page. Uh, we do have, uh, looks like a little bit of tornado activity. Four reports of tornadoes. Arizona. 
That's interesting. Uh, a little video from social media. Small rotating debris field rips a few sh few shingles off a roof and sends a trash can into the air. Interesting. All right. Um, elsewhere, it looks like a number of tornadoes out there, but really nothing big. Mainly going to be some hail reports. Lots of hail reports coming in there today. As uh, far as the outlook goes, for the remainder of the night... What is going on here? Maybe there's a bunch of bunch of people looking at this page here because it's awfully slow. This is going to be for tomorrow, uh, for Wednesday. Severe weather risk down across the uh, southeastern area of Texas. Bringing with it, uh, looks like some uh, tornado threat way down there. It's limited to the, uh, the uh, gulf down there. A little bit of wind and some hail threats as well. Uh, this has not been fully loaded, but we can go back here a little bit. I want to check out the precipitation accumulation run out here. See what we got here for the next couple weeks as we put this into motion. California looks like we looks like we're getting a little bit of rain out here. Um, I think that's next week. Not a uh, big one, but that's quite rare for us to get rain this late in the season. Our rainy season uh, pretty much ended back in. Uh, for the most part, March, early April. So rain in May is a little rare for us out here. Uh, but we do have that coming. A lot more rain across Oklahoma and Texas and the south and Florida area as well. Um, yeah, it looks quite wet out there across the majority of the map. Southern California, not so much. All right, seismograph stations out there, pretty quiet. Nothing showing up there on the board for now. <clears throat> uh, we'll just kind of watch things here, see how it uh, plays out. Like I said, keep an eye here on the Bay Area. Definitely got an uh, uh, uptick out of the blue, so to speak, with a bunch of smaller quakes out here in the last 24 hours. I'm wondering here, let's see, yeah. A lot of activity south here along the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. Further down south here, building up. It seems like it stops right here at the um, Santa Cruz Mountain section. So this area may be getting ready to produce something. I don't know, but I still think uh, this uptick here in the last 24 hours is a sign here of things getting ready to move. Uh, so watch the San Francisco area. Aside from that, folks, I'm out of here. I'm I'm ready to call it a day. It's just been a, I don't know, just one of those days I felt like, I feel like, uh, I don't know, maybe something in the air out here. Maybe it could be the heat. We hit 90 degrees out here uh, today uh, where I'm at outside of Chico, California, and I, I'm not a big fan of the heat. So I think that's uh, what put me in a, a downer kind of mood, but uh, it's only going to get hotter, <laughs> so I got to get used to it. In fact, we're going to be close to 100 degrees here. Uh, as we head towards Friday and Saturday already. You know, and that's not a feels like temperature because of humidity. It's, we're just going to be hot, 100 degrees or so this weekend. Anyway, have a good night, folks. We will see you back out here in the morning. Stay safe. A lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now. Try to keep it off of this page. But, uh, yeah, have a good one. <laughs>